Do you hit the snooze every morning? And after waking up, are you able to fall back asleep at 10 to 11 a.m.? Do you feel tired throughout the day? If the answers are yes, you are probably sleep deprived. Hey nerds, this is Ming. See, in 2017, I had a simple plan for my new year resolution. I'd end each day by 10 p.m. and start the next at seven. How hard could that be? So after a long productive day, on my first day, the clock stroke 10, I declared out loud, let's call it a day. After spending 15 minutes rolling in my blanket, I was like, you know what? I'm actually not that tired. Let's get a bit more work done. Then 30 minutes in, all right, that's it. I'm going to bed. When I turned off the lights, I thought to myself, maybe I should check my phone one last time before I turn in. Just, just a quick one, just so I don't miss anything important on Facebook. Then one video led to another. I found myself binge watching Key and Peel till 2 a.m. in the morning. And this story would repeat itself in a similar fashion for three years. That is until I stumbled upon this. It's called Why We Sleep, Unlocking the Power of Sleep and Dreams. And wow, since then I had been clocking in a consistent seven to nine hour sleep time, day in and day out. And I'm gonna share some key ideas today since this is the book you guys voted on my Instagram. The author's name is Matthew Walker, a neuroscientist and renowned sleep researcher, brilliant guy. Walker spent his whole life sticking electrodes in people's skull and study how to put people to sleep. And he's done it by writing this book. It's never too late to start sleeping better. No, I'm kidding. It's actually a very interesting book. I'm at the age where I feel I should not take my health for granted. I wanna stay young, I wanna keep my morning wood going forever. I call it self-awareness. My wife calls it an early midlife crisis. Whatever, she doesn't know what she's talking about. And, and you may skip to the end if you wanna go straight into the actionable advices. There are two main factors that governs our sleep, circadian rhythm and adenosine. Within the circadian rhythm, we all have a natural rest period and a waking period. Yep, there's a Rolex inside our brains, all of us. Our times might not match though. For instance, I'm a morning lark. I feel extremely guilty if I sleep past seven. It's a capital crime to me. And some of you might be night owls and simply think it's crazy to wake up to daylight. Others might ask, what the hell is daylight? Never seen such thing before. And I guess that explains why some of my friends are always late at gatherings. We carry different time zones with us. Scientists actually believe that variation in sleep rhythm helped early humans survive. And it makes total sense. I mean, if you imagine if a leopard walks into a cave and saw the whole tribe sound asleep. Wow, I was kind of expecting a messy fight. I guess bon appetit. It'll be like a full seven course dinner neatly lined up for the leopard, French style. Now, if some of them were awake, at least they'd be able to run away if they're smart. Now, aside from the circadian rhythm, there's a second factor to sleep. A denison. That's what makes you feel tired, thus creating a sleep pressure. A denison accumulates once you awake in the morning and then every waking minute after that. So when you go to bed at day end, a denison will slowly release. It's like letting water out of a dam until the cycle repeats itself on the next day when you wake up. Now, can you game the system? Sure, I do it all the time. With a cup of daily pour over, it's my daily ritual. Caffeine blocks the adenosine receptors, so it creates a wall to trick your brain into believing the sleep pressure didn't exist. Yeah, for a time. The author describes this as the equivalent of sticking your fingers in your ears to shut out a sound, blah, 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 like that. But here's a catch. Though some of the caffeine will wear off in five to six hours, half of it will actually stick around in your system throughout the night, which might still affect your sleep. Yeah, personally, I've committed myself to a cutoff time for a coffee at 12 p.m. the latest. And if you don't believe the power of caffeine, here's a research done in 1948 when scientists decided to drug a bunch of spiders and observe their behaviors, which is hilarious. So here's a web of a normal spider. It looks fully functional. It probably trapped a lot of bugs with it. Now, this is a spider on marijuana. It's not as good, but it's still plausible. Check out this caffeinated spider. <laughs> so, first of all, that's some mind-blowing web design. I mean, it's of little constructive use, but this is artistic high-level abstract art. I gotta give him that. This is definitely NFT material. It goes to show caffeine is a strong drug. So strong it turns spiders into Picasso. 
During the night, we cycle between two types of sleep every 90 minutes. Rapid eye movement and non-rapid eye movement sleep. REM and NREM, you might have learned this in school. So during NREM, we compartmentalize our memories. The brain gets rid of unnecessary information and transfer our short-term memories from the hippocampus to the neocortex for our long-term storage. So in computer terms, our brains need to clear out the cache memory and we must back up what's important to our local hard drive so we can store more info on the next day and we do this daily. And that explains why I have the memory of a goldfish. I didn't back up the data on a regular basis. You need to back up your data. So REM on the other hand is normally associated with dreams. Uh, but actually we dream in both stages. REM sleep is when we go in our sleep. Yeah, our muscles become temporarily paralyzed to prevent us from acting out the sick dreams we sometimes have, and you know what I'm talking about. This chapter opening about dreams were extremely powerful. Think about what happened to you last night. You had been flagrantly psychotic. In fact, it will happen again tonight. Let me quote from the book. When you were dreaming last night, you started to see things that were not there. You were hallucinating. You believed things that could not possibly be true. You were delusional. You became confused with time, place, and person. You were disoriented. You had extreme swings in your emotions. You were effectively labile. Finally, you woke up this morning forgetting most, if not all, of the entire bizarre dream experience. You were suffering from amnesia. If any of these happened while you were awake, you'd check into the nearest asylum. I remember, I was listening to this paragraph when I was on the street. I had to stop and process. You know, first, I mean, I was a little offended. Who are you to casually make up a side of me that I didn't know existed with your outrageous diagnosis and rubbing in my face like that? This paragraph sent me straight to seven stages of grief in 10 seconds. Yet, I couldn't disagree. That's what happens in our dreams, right? We are all cycles when we dream. If you say no, that just proves you're also delusional in reality. REM sleep served as an overnight therapy. It helps us sort our deep emotions, memories, and motivations, and it allows us to make new connections, generate creative ideas, and solve problems. To put simply, we wake up seeing the world in a slightly new way. All in all, dreams are important. And when we cut our sleep short, it'll be like taking your car in for maintenance and asking for it back with the wheels half installed we're not getting the full treatment we need. With insufficient sleep, we're more susceptible to diseases, from cancers to diabetes to Alzheimer's. Better sleep well then. Hopefully you're convinced by now. So how do we change things around starting tonight? First, have a consistent sleep and wake times each day to help regulate your sleep-inducing hormones. Avoid big meals and exercise before bed. Our bodies need time to unwind. Avoid alcohol and caffeine sometime before bed or simply set a cutoff time. If you take naps, don't do it past 3. Cooling off your room before bed and remove lights at night time. Most importantly, stay away from your phone 2 hours before sleep. Take a hot bath before bed. Your body will experience a temperature drop when you step out, which helps you feel sleepy. Lastly, if you really can't fall asleep, don't toss and turn for too long. Get out of bed, do something light, read a book or something. Then go back when you're truly ready to fall asleep. Sleep is so underrated in modern society. Think about it. We're the only species on earth that would artificially shorten our rest time, even from an economical perspective. I for one used to think I would accomplish more work by cutting sleep time. That is ridiculous. Now I'm actually able to outperform and over-deliver in shorter work hours simply by making a small change to my sleep habits. Have you ever told yourself, oh, I wish I could do this and accomplish that while I was asleep? In a way, yeah, you can. Quality sleep actually buys you wake time. And the cherry on top, it enhances your exercise and diet in ways you might not notice. It increases your metabolic rate, suppresses the hormones that makes us feel hungry, thus making us less likely to overeat, and more energy to exercise. I mean, they sync up like an orchestra. Same effort and time added results, 
How great is that? I give this book a 4.0 nerds. All right, that's it, nerds. If you're interested in short, thorough weekly book reviews and want to help grow this nerd immunity and keep this going, simply click subscribe and the bell icon for notification. I'll offer an audio free trial link for my fellow nerds so you can get this audiobook for free on the first time. Place your ballots on future episodes idea on my Instagram and Facebook today. Also, I want to know if you have ever struggled with sleep or experienced jet lag or caffeine crash or simply tell me, how do you sleep at night? Check out next week's video if you want to find out how I lost over 9 pounds in 13 days from implementing the ideas from this weight loss bestseller. I'll talk to you next week. Yeah. Okay.